Welcome to Concept 5, Division Facts. So today we're going to go through a few things to help you support your student as best as you can. We're going to do some standards, talk about the important vocabulary, and some important how-tos for you to know the, know the concepts the best to help your student. We're going to focus on four standards today. The first standard we're going to focus on is the A2 standard, which was the one that we had focused on in the last concept, which is interpreting whole number quotients of whole numbers. So today we're actually going to give names to the different parts of the division sentence, which will allow students to start interpreting division scenarios in specific ways and identify the situations that they're looking for. Following that, we're going to look at the A4 standard, which is determining an unknown whole number. We're going to look at fact families today, and we're going to talk about when we have a missing number, how we can find that missing number, and how we can use other facts to help us with that. Following, we're going to do the B6 standard, which is understanding division as an unknown factor problem. So in order to become fluent in multiplication and division, we need to be able to think about each operation as opposites, inverse. So if I'm looking for something, say, 32 divided by 8, I can find that quotient by thinking about when I multiply 8, what would give me 32? And finally, I'm going to look at the C7 standard, which is fluency in their multiplication and division. Okay, And knowing that there was a relationship between the two, which would allow the fluency to build. So our important vocab is quite a lot this time. The first word that you need to know is the dividend. And in any division problem, it's the quantity that's being divided. And it's usually the largest number in the division fact. It's typically the first and the largest number that you see in the division sentence. The second word that I want you guys to know and explore is the divisor, which is the quantity dividing the dividend. The divisor can have two meanings. It can either represent the number of groups that the dividend is being put into, or the number of objects that are being put into the groups. Following is the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. And finally, the word inverse. So if, if we're putting it in terms of operations, we're talking about operations that are opposite of one another. Multiplication and division are inverse because they do the opposite action to the numbers that they are with. Multiplication grows a quantity in equal groups, whereas division chunks down a quantity into smaller groups or sets. So your how-tos for today are going to be building fact families with using multiplication and division and being able to explain why a number cannot be divided by zero. So let's begin with the fact family. A fact family is a set of four mathematical sentences that are all related in the numbers that they contain. Fact families contain two inverse operations and in our case it's going to be multiplication and division. So when we're talking about multiplication, we use the commutative property to create two sentences using the same factors. I chose 3, 4, and 12. I can make a multiplication sentence using 3, 4, and 12 by doing 3 times 4, three groups of four objects, which gives me a total of 12 objects. Compute, commutative property allows me to switch the factors here. So now I can have four groups of three objects, and I can still have a total of 12. When I add division into this, the divisor can represent groups or objects. So we can change the number that goes into this space. Using the same numbers, 3, 4, and 12, I start off with the total this time. And I'm going to divide 12 into groups of 3. And if I were to do that, that would give me 4 groups. So let me switch 3 and 4 and their roles in these sentences. Again, I start off with 12. This time, I want to divide my quantity into four groups. And that gives me three objects in each group. These four sentences are part of a fact family. They're using the same factors and relating multiplication and division by showing how these factors can change positions and roles within the sentences that they're in. 
Finally, let's talk about why you cannot divide by zero. This is important for students to understand because we can divide by pretty much any number throughout. But once we get to zero, students oftentimes think that it's easy because when we talk about multiplication, our products are always zero when we multiply. So it's often difficult for them to understand why you can't divide a number by zero since we can divide pretty much by any number up to this point. So the best way to do it is to explain it in scenarios. So let's say I have four counters and I want to divide them into zero groups. Well, I have zero groups. Nothing exists in that space. So let me try a different way of thinking of it. I have four counters, and I'm going to divide them into groups of zero. Well, that means that I'm not circling any counters. I have nothing in a group, so I can't do either of these situations. If groups don't exist, then I have nothing to put my objects in. If my groups have zero objects in them, then I can't create groups at all. Therefore, my answers can't happen, so you cannot divide by zero. My recommendation is maybe spending a little time on this slide thinking about this, this scenario because it's going to be very important for your student to understand it as he or she moves on. So thank you so much for being a great support unit to your child at home. It means a lot to the teachers and means a lot to your child. So please, as you move through, have fun and math on.